Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today we are checking out Caleb Williams doing some film. If you are part of the community, you know this is take two. I did the whole thing, the audio didn't capture. I am pressed. I'm still a little salt. I'm still very salty, actually. Um, I, whoo, I'm gonna try my best. I, I apologize in advance if it's if it's lackluster, but I'm so mad. It was it was great too, and there's no way to recover it because the audio didn't capture. If I do say so myself, but anyway, um, yeah, a couple things. People talking about Caleb Williams. People are talking about pro days. People throwing in shorts. Um, the USC Pro Day, not the Caleb Williams Pro Day, but people throwing in shorts to other people in shorts with no defenders, like, okay, whatever. If we want to talk about Caleb Williams, then we're going to go to the film where it actually matters. And I was saying last time, it's a unique experience, uh, something new for the channel because I've seen this game many times, but, uh, I saw today that someone put up the all 22, um, of the passes and so you were kind of reacting with me live for my first time seeing it from these angles and I specifically chose this game because if you listen to me you know um, that number one it doesn't matter what you do it's how you do it you can always take information from each play but also I don't need to see you at your best I want to see you at your worst and if I could get a gauge of how you look then, then I got an understanding of kind of what your capacity is. So that's uh, some of the reasons. If if this is the big bad game that everybody talks about, then I wanted to pull that one up. So um, obviously you won't be <laughs> reacting with or seeing me react live because I just did this. But um, I don't know. Hopefully that will go through smoother this time, I guess. But also... Um, realize that this isn't set up like the typical all 22 where it gives you to play twice one from the wide one from the end zone some plays have both some don't and it, it cuts quick so it's YouTube it's not NFL plus so my rewind it might be a little wonky so I apologize for that but that's just the way it's set up and then on top of that I'm playing it at 50% speed so that we at least have some time to go through it so yeah, let's get into it, man. I went about to four minutes and 30 seconds because, um, you know, these things can go long. It's only seven minutes, but when you really break stuff down, it can stretch it out. So I thought we we captured most of what we needed to talk about within that time frame. So let's go ahead, man. Let's try and let's try to I want to say knock it out, but let's do this. So two by two, top of the drop. Now, what you're going to see, one thing you're going to see throughout this is the concept that i t keep telling people it is very popular and it's not a luke getsy thing it's not a matt naggy thing everybody which was weird that bears fans blame naggy and then getsy was doing the same thing and but anyway you see it around the whole league and obviously in college so we got a hitch hitch a little bit of a curl longer hitch then we got a vertical either come in post or deep crosser and so top of the drop, Caleb's already under pressure. So we'll go back. And again, this offensive line, not a lot of NFL caliber guys. So really not getting the type of protection that we expect him to have. Tackle gets beat immediately. And you can see without even breaking his eye contact downfield, Caleb feels that pressure. He has that sense in the pocket and he makes a break to step up. Breaks that tackle, stays in balance, doesn't see anything downfield, remains a passer at all times, but decides to just take what he can get. So then we got another two by two bunch to the boundary, top of the drop, lets it fly, gets it to his receiver. Pretty simple. Now this is one of the interceptions and they're going to do it from the end zone. So we got a play action here, um, a bit of a veer play action. The defense rallies. It's a tight end pop, play action pop, where he leaks out. Now, this is one of the first interceptions. You'll see the ball sails on him, just gets over his tight end for interception. And the thing I told people about 
these and we'll we'll see the rest but you look at this first thing i notice is evaluator he's backpedaling he's off platform he's backpedaling falling away making this throw and this is what i say you have to be able to get this information because i watch that and i say he still has the arm strength falling away to get that ball downfield and even overthrows it that's not excusing the interception, but you have to take the information. It's not just what you do, it's how you do it. So seeing that, one thing I noticed, okay, this man has a good amount of um, arm talent where he still can get that ball down the field. Now, some people will say, okay, just drop that ball, put a little touch on it. He doesn't have touch. You, you, What you see is a play. You take that information in, and you wait to see if that continues to happen. If you see that multiple times throughout the game, then you got a pattern. Then you see other games. Is he still doing that? Now that's when you establish what a player can do. However, if you don't see that pattern, then it might be more of an isolated incident. So right now we're going to lock this in. For me, he's off platform. Ball sails on him a little bit. But that tells me something about his arm strength. So that's kind of what I take away from that play. All right, so next play, we're in empty. Top of the drop. We got guys going vertical, not really sure what they're doing. We got one person on the shorter route, and they're in press. Press man across the board, locked up, no one really open. And... I believe that ball was incomplete. I'm not sure, but Caleb tries to force one in there. Kind of a standard throw, but again, you see nobody really open. So motion here went empty, and we run a quarterback draw. A quarterback power, a quarterback power draw. So kick him out, pulls it to this A gap. That's where we want to go. Guard gets beat across his face. The defender gets into that A gap. This is where we want to go. So Caleb bounces to the open B gap. Now, I think he could have just took this and got vertical. He decides to bounce outside of his blocks, take it wide, isn't able to get much. I think as a runner, definitely could have been a different outcome there. Two by two. Um couple things here so i'll let it play out and i think we'll get the end zone view as well oh lord this is doing that again so yeah so the first thing i notice on this play is you see caleb gets to the top of the drop and he's already moving he sees that the pocket is cluttered he feels that it's, it's cluttered and he's moving you get some guys get to the top of the drop. They just stand there patting the ball, feet are planted. You can see he has that natural feel for the pocket. This is the open space. I'm going to get to the open space. Gets to the open space. Doesn't like what he's seeing there. Decides on the whip route. Guy comes across, then comes back out. Throws it cross body and makes that pass. Now, some people are going to be like, yay, highlight. But really... To me, doesn't matter so much if that's complete, incomplete, potentially intercepted, whatever. And again, this is what I talk about with translation versus projection. I'm not so worried about the outcome. I'm not so worried about, hey, Caleb can do that, you know, every other play in the NFL. No, but I do want to see what your capacity is. Remember, physical traits. Football IQ, technique, personality. This tells me a lot about your physical traits. Whether I like the play or not, you stop rolling left and throw cross body right with enough velocity and accuracy to get a completion. And the ball's a little bit behind. Receiver has to make a play, but that tells me about your physical ability. And I'll let it play out again. You're rolling one way, stepping up, sidearm throw across the body. So I don't necessarily need you to copy paste. Hey, this is what Caleb is going to do. No, this is about what is that capacity. And that tells me a lot of information about your arm strength. And your accuracy to that point. 
So anyway, this is a play I don't like. It's a rollout. Not sure exactly what it's supposed to be. We get to the top of the drop. Have no clue what this is supposed to be. So Caleb now improvises. Starts to step back. Steps up in the pocket. Gets a one-on-one. -on -one, and you see he out-athletes the linebacker. And is able to get up a nice game. And again, that's just a bit of the improv, improv, improvisational skills that didn't go back as far as I wanted where this play call is really not good but he has the wherewithal to try to make something out of it so then we get to the next play 20 personnel, 2 in the back little play action look running back stays in the block and not really sure what you got here. Some guys kind of running into each other. But backside, you got a wide open coming across the middle. Puts it a little bit behind, but makes that throw. Motion at the backfield. We got dual screens. Doesn't take the initial screen. Rolls out. Gets a moving screen to the other side. Nothing too big there. All right, so end zone view, play action, fade ball. Now, for my money, that's a really good pass. Again, you look at where it lands. Lands right outside of the hash or the sideline where only the receiver could catch it. Now, obviously, the receiver has to uncover and get open, but this is what I talk about. Earlier, we looked at that interception. We said, man, there was no touch on there. It sailed on him. Now we filed that away. We get to another play. This is evidence counter to earlier. So now I'm not seeing a pattern because I just saw him put great at, uh, touch on that pass. So now, obviously, we're going to keep watching. But that's how you kind of cite that information. Again, if that was way out of bounds or it was just nowhere near with good touch, then that'd be like, man, that's two times. And now we start to see a pattern. This goes against that. So now I'm thinking at this point as an evaluator, that interception might be a little more isolated because he was off platform versus this where he's able to set up and throw a ball. All right, moving on, two by two. RPO or play action screen. Not real, not really much to talk about there. Get to this next play. This is a swing screen. Not really set up well, not executed well, nothing on Caleb. Down in the red zone again, another screen. This play, I thought the receiver could have been could have been a little more shallow, could have came inside a little more, but I also think um, Caleb's pass uh, could have been a little tighter to bring him in. But overall, I just think receiver and quarterback didn't execute that extremely well, but not a big play. All right, two by two, we see this concept again, hitch, hitch. We'll see some coming over the middle and the vertical. Takes a quick check down. Nothing much on that play. We got a play action here, a read action, RPO. Uh, throws it, I believe, past the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot to take away from that play. So then we got motion, play action here. And then this play, you get the tight end coming across. And that might be a play that you could attempt to take man coverage again. Um, I think I'm pretty sure Brandon Rice is out here. Instead, he takes a shot, one on one coverage, kind of try to give him a ball that he could go for. Also, potentially play the flag. And in the NFL, you could definitely play the flag more than you can in college. So that was just that decision there. Fourth and short or something in short, play action. And Caleb keeps it himself. 
and really just see the speed to the edge, obviously the hurdle, the balance, trust in him to uh, make that play. Obviously tells you something about his athleticism. And he's able, again, to stride out, beat these guys to the edge. All right, next play. Got three in the backfield. Little misdirection, RPO. Throws the ball. And this is incomplete. Hits the receiver hand. I didn't see that last time, honestly. I couldn't tell where the ball was. But here you get the RPO. You're reading this linebacker. This uh, weak side linebacker punches, vacates the space. So you could throw that in there. Throws it on a bit of a sidearm platform. Again, feet are planted, not stepping into the throw. Complete arm throw, no lower body mechanics. So the ball definitely dives a little bit on him. Um, and I mean, yeah, I, I, you, again, I wouldn't say off platform, but not tight mechanics. So the ball dives, gives this receiver a chance, but it's incomplete there. So again, we got a veer action. This time he keeps it. There's a flag, but obviously that doesn't matter. We're watching kind of the athleticism. And when you're watching in slow motion, it's interesting how quickly he pulled away from people. And I have no idea that Caleb is a 4-4 runner or anything. Who knows? But just on this particular play, you see the athleticism, especially in open space where he's able to strike. I think he might be a little quicker once he gets that build-up speed than some people think. But just a chance to see that athleticism. So then backed up, we're going to see another ugly play soon. So play action there. Slant. And this one's hard to tell. It's incomplete. It's hard to tell where this ball lands because it's not super clear. Um, that might have hit the receiver in the hands and he dropped it. Might also be a little bit behind the receiver. Obviously, if you throw it in front, he catches it, runs onto it, and goes. So that might have been a little bit behind. So that might have been on both of them. All right. Play action here. Screen. Again, sidearm throw, which I think most quarterbacks, despite your arm strength, can make that throw these days. So we drop back here. X protection, leak out. Now this is the interception. So this is uh, the second interception. So here's the thing here. Here's what you notice. Actually, let me go back because you'll see it better. What you notice here, they have a lot of pressure. O-line picks it up pretty decently. Running back doesn't get the edge pressure. Caleb sees all the pressure. He steps up into the dirty pocket. Now, he wants to make a throw here, and still he still wants to make a throw. Now, look, his right leg, oh, my God, is completely off of the ground. And so, again, we talk about off-platform. We talk about not having your mechanics. One of your legs is completely off the ground. That's going to impact your accuracy. And so, he's trying to go here, and maybe he wants to lead him. But he doesn't have the accuracy and arm strength to put the ball where he wants. And it ends up getting intercepted pretty easily. And then we'll watch it from the end zone view. Because from the wide, you might be like, check it down. So at this point, Caleb's getting ready to throw. He already made his choice. Now, you could still say, hey, right here, he's even, he's leaving. Just lead the back, throw with some anticipation, let him go. But Caleb made his decision, and he's going to try to force this ball. I'm not saying it's a good decision at all, but that's kind of what it is. So at this point, and when he from the wide, you're like, oh yeah, that guy's checked it down. But from this, you see his eyes locked, his arms already uh, in throwing motion. He's about to make that throw, and those are the type of plays again that you say, okay. We can reel that in. You think about a Mahomes. You think definitely think about uh, Josh Allen. You still see it to today. 
But you think about him, think about Herbert, you think about a lot of these guys, not Burrow. Burrow was clean because he had that one year. But you think about a lot of these guys, and those are all common things that they had to learn how to control. Some do it better than others. There's other quarterbacks in the past that never got it under control. But And I'm not saying that he's guaranteed to get it under control, but what I'm saying is it's possible. And so these are the plays that I'm sure he got coached up after the game and these are the plays these new coaches are going to coach him up. Hey, we don't have to force this one right here. We can play it safe because one thing, if you watch any team, Bears, anybody, quarterbacks do not throw the ball away anymore like they should, and we will see that later. So anyway, he's already loading up for that throw, not able to get what he wants on it, can't lead that receiver. But again, Two interceptions on paper. Oh, two interceptions. Whoa, that's not good. But you got to watch the play. Two times. Interception off platform. So running back comes out of the backfield. Again, we see kind of the same concept. One vertical route. One hitch. Two other shorter routes. Takes that shot. It's covered up. Receiver. It's not really getting any separation. So again, we see the hitches. We see the over. We see the vertical. Takes the check down. Not a lot going on there. Going for the read action. And I thought this was a good play. I'll let it play out. So not much happens. I mean, it's just incomplete. But... You could have a quarterback get in some real trouble in that situation. And obviously, we've seen Justin Fields get out of a lot of trouble and stuff like that. But I would like this, that he's able to hold the space, play with the leverage, understand his leverage with the defender, still remain a passer, ready to do something if somebody messes up. Defender stays home well, athletic enough to still not take the sack, but then just throws it away, knows the play's over. But that's just that play, because I know what's coming up. But that's that play. He doesn't always know when to just let the play die. So play action here. We got pressure again. Running back does the best he can. Um, he scrambles to the short side of the field or rolls out to the short side of the field. And now here, this is just what I was talking about. He recessed the throw. Now look, both of his legs are completely off the ground when he makes that throw. And it's intercepted again. Again, underthrown, isn't able to get the lift on it he wants, picked off. Again, both legs off the ground. The man completely jumped past. That's not what you want. And in this situation, again, you coach up. Throw that away. Live the fight another day. He wants to play a bit of hero ball, tries to force it in there. Big arm syndrome as well. Believing that I got this talent, I can fit it in there. Jumps completely off the ground. And so, again, people that want to translate say, well, you can't do that in the NFL. Well, duh, he got picked in college. That's not what you are expecting him to do. You're not coaching him to do that. You're not expecting to pick up Caleb Williams' college version and just go. No, you have to work to mold him into the NFL version and so that we aren't doing plays like that. And again, that's the same story for a lot of quarterbacks. So that is intercepted. There's three interceptions in half. Oh, my God, people quote that. But when you watch the actual plays, and again, as an evaluator, I'm not making excuses. This is anybody I watch. I say, okay, I know what you did, but how did you do it? And I say, it's three times in a row that two times you forced the pass, you didn't need to, and three times you were completely off platform and you had no lower body mechanics and the ball wasn't accurate. So then again, you say to yourself, is this a situation where he can't read the play, where he doesn't have accuracy, or is this a situation where this man is off platform he's not even giving himself the best chance to deliver the pass and of course the decisions 
outside of the tight end pass. They're not good decisions. So anyway, we got four out on the route, running back out the backfield. Quick throw, slant. Next play, motion and running back out. Top of the drop. Well, past the top of the drop, we got nothing open. We had a hitch sitting here. This guy's completely tied up. Back doesn't have any space. Uh, just coming off a collision is this receiver, but another safety. So nothing really there. Um, well, in these other spots. On the second hitch, once he steps up in the pocket, able to deliver a slant. And receiver makes a play. I think they show the same thing. Yeah, so sidearm through a small spot delivers the throw. Here we got play action, a little read action. Takes it, or I shouldn't say play action, read action. RPO takes it, gets a couple yards. Running back bails out. Quick setup, quick throw. Another slant across the middle. Pretty standard throws. Although, watch Drake May. Empty. Gets to the top of the drop. Um, again, press man coverage. We got um, we got the over route being covered. We got the check down deep. That's covered. Safety's over the top. Everybody's got somebody. So Caleb wants to throw, decides to get rid of it. Again, making a better decision this time. But again, as I say, you can always get information. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Oh, incomplete pass, whatever. No, watch this. Legs, tied up, throws the ball on the move, out of bounds. This ball flies way out of bounds. And so again, if I'm watching that and it barely makes it out of bounds that tells me different information so it's still information i could take about uh the physical arm strength there so we got four to one side i remember this play and so you're going to get a fake bubble because everybody goes vertical they was hoping people would bite they did not everybody stays covered and caleb gets sacked and to be objective that is a play one of the rare plays i've seen where caleb Completely didn't see the pressure. And this is not that's is not his blind side. So coming from the right side, again, nothing's open. Caleb's waiting, waiting, trying to make a play. Ends up getting sacked. Uh, I believe fumbling too. So gotta be objective. But again, those are again plays that you take that information in, you say how often does this occur, how freak, frequent is it. And that's not something that I saw a lot. All right, two by two. We got a uh, kind of the same concept, hitch, hitch, vertical, route coming over. Takes the quick one, overshoots his receiver a little bit. Two by two. Uh, gets to the top of the drop, moving in the pocket. Really nothing open so far. I, uh, he gets open late back across and then Caleb wants to take the check down the late check down and as I say fans don't like this defenders make good plays too this defender retraces gets in the throwing lane times it up well bats it down almost intercepted but that's good play by the defender so when empty And this is a rub route, completely illegal to me. And they do throw a flag, so I'm guessing it was illegal, but I hate those plays. So anyway, we're out of empty again. Top of the drop. We got one hitch. We got an out route coming. Um, two going vertical. Caleb stays in the uh, pocket, makes this throw. 
Uh, they end up knocking the receiver down. So, a couple things on this. This is what I talk about, so we'll be able to see. Caleb makes the throw. And you watch where the ball lands. So, not yet. Ball lands right there. So, as I said before, when I'm evaluating the quarterback's deep ball accuracy, I want to see where they miss and how they miss. So, you got Brandon Rice having a couple steps on them. Now, if the ball comes up here to the 30 short, that tells me one thing. If the ball misses over here towards the safety, that tells me another. He misses um, ahead of where the receiver goes down and in line with where the receiver's route was. So, that tells me the ball was accurate. That tells me the ball was, had enough arm strength on it. That's not saying that it was automatically going to be complete, but again, you see where they miss, and that tells me the ball was going where the receiver was supposed to be, and that tells you one thing about that as well. And then the other thing you'll see, if you didn't notice, is the good work in the pocket, um, and you hear this stuff about him in the pocket. So obviously, pocket's collapsing, understands that, has the manipulation to manipulate the pocket. So he steps up. Pocket is tight. Pocket isn't necessarily clean. Isn't scared to make a throw. Even getting contact makes that throw still. And then again, we see where the throw kind of ends up. So this is where I stopped last time. I feel like I went through a little quicker. I guess we'll watch one more play um, just in case. Maybe it's a good one. So play action here, quick throw to the hitch, more like a noun. We'll watch one more. Three in the backfield, play action. I mean, he's sacked there. So, well, let's look down the field because that's really what we want to know. So after that play action, um, these routes are kind of lazy. Receivers aren't doing anything. Then you got um, the other guy out the backfield. I'm not sure if that's a receiver or not. But he's beating his man. But safety's over the top of that. Plus the ref. I've noticed that in this game and other college games. They need to move that ref. That ref is always in the way of a play. So you run into the ref. You also got the safety there. That's that's a dirty pass. Now, this check down is definitely one you could have. Now, obviously, the play was designed to go here. That gets messed up. So, Caleb starts to retreat. Tries to do magic, but is not able to. Goes down. All right, so I'm going to stop it there. Hopefully, it all recorded this time. Um, but, yeah, so this is one of those games that I know because I've seen it a lot. Doesn't show off the elite ability that Caleb has in the pocket um, as well as some other games uh, just because just the way they were playing him. But still, I talk about him being a rare prospect, a elite prospect. I'm not saying generational, but I am saying rare and elite. Um, I've talked before for, for people that are new um, from the beginning. You look at his short area quickness and balance and burst. You look at his natural feel for the pocket and you look at his arm strength and ability to be accurate with velocity on the move off platform. That's a rare combination you don't see with quarterbacks coming out. And so that is why I call him an elite prospect, a rare prospect. And I think, again, you watch throughout all the games, you will see that kind of shine in different areas. But I think even from what we watched here, and this being the ugliest game, the bad game, I watched that as an evaluator. That is rare stuff. And again, I'm not looking to pick him up from this Notre Dame game and put him on my team. I'm looking at what are you doing play by play to give me information about you in those three areas, your technique, your IQ, and your physical traits. 
Now we got to figure out what the pro version of you is going to look like and what can you do specifically with my offense? How does that fit? How does this play fit with or that play work with my receivers? How would that play look with my O-line? How would I have changed this play up to help him out? That is the projection, not translating, not copy paste, projection of what this can be. A player could have all the firepower. It's up to the team, and I mean him, the coaches, everybody, to build a weapon that can effectively use that firepower. And so Mahomes has built an, uh, an, an incredibly deadly efficient weapon that harnesses his firepower. And you know what he can do, but that doesn't mean he has to do it all the time. And that's the projection that Caleb is on, like any other quarterback with a missed talent. We know that you can do it. Now that I know you can throw it sidearm accurately across your body, that doesn't mean you're going to have to do it every play, and we don't want you in that situation. But we want you to learn how to be effective, efficient, and when you have to do those plays, then you can. And that is the thing that you hear the most from the scouts. He had to play hero ball this year. He had to put on the cape. We see with Josh Allen how that can go south, and we see it with other players. And so you just have to get a balance to it. Um, but, yeah, so that's it. Uh, go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. I mean share it around. We need more Better Bears fans. Spread the word. Spread the love. Bring more people in here. Start the conversation. Thumbs up, subscribe, and remember, stay up and bear down.